From the very beginning, fraud boys have carried themselves with a kind of arrogant confidence that makes it seem as if they are smarter than everyone else. They believe that because they have access to VPNs, offshore accounts, and Bitcoin wallets, they are untouchable. They operate in WhatsApp groups, Telegram channels, and closed forums, boasting about their so-called security while pulling off romance scams, credit card fraud, and money laundering. They convince themselves that once they convert their stolen money into Bitcoin, the FBI, Interpol, or even EOCO in Ghana cannot reach them. But what they do not understand is that the very system they think is protecting them is the same system that exposes them. Bitcoin is not invisible money. It is one of the most traceable financial networks in the entire world. Unlike cash, which disappears into pockets and wallets without a record, Bitcoin runs on blockchain technology, which is like a digital ledger that never forgets. Every single transaction is recorded, timestamped, and stored forever. It does not matter if the fraud boy moves the money today, tomorrow, or 10 years later, the trail will always be there. That is where the mistake lies. Fraud boys believe anonymity equals invisibility, but the blockchain is open to anyone, and once law enforcement zeroes in on your wallet, the clock begins to tick. Let us imagine a scenario. A fraud boy tricks a victim in the United States through a romance scam. He convinces her to send him $5,000 worth of Bitcoin. She makes a transfer, and the moment it lands in his wallet, that wallet address becomes evidence. When the victim reports to the FBI, they record the address, feed it into their blockchain analysis tools, and start mapping the transactions. Fraud boys often panic and begin to move the money from one wallet to another, believing that multiple hops will cover their tracks. What they don't know is that every hop is being mapped. The blockchain is a public road, and you cannot run fast enough to erase your footprints. The FBI does not stop at mapping. They have global partners and commercial companies like Chainalysis, CypherTrace, and Elliptic, whose sole purpose is to track dirty Bitcoin. These companies work with color codes, tagging wallets connected to scams, drug trafficking, ransomware, or romance fraud. Once a wallet is tagged, every transaction flowing in or out of it becomes suspicious and is flagged across global exchanges. If the fraud boy tries to push his coins into Binance, Coinbase, or Kraken, the exchange immediately locks the funds. Why? Because these exchanges are regulated and forced to comply with anti-money laundering laws. They demand identity verification, including government IDs, proof of residence, and in some cases, live selfies. When the fraud boy finally attempts to cash out, believing he has succeeded, what he has actually done is expose himself. This is how the FBI catches them. With a simple subpoena, the FBI contacts the exchange, requests the KYC documents tied to the wallet, and immediately gets the fraud boy's real name, passport, and sometimes even his selfie. The fraud boy may have believed he was invisible, but in reality, he just walked himself straight into the arms of the law. This is why fraud boys in Ghana, Nigeria, and other parts of Africa keep getting exposed and extradited. They fail to understand that Bitcoin's transparency is its biggest weakness when it comes to crime. Another mistake fraud boys make is believing in mixes and tumblers. These are services designed to wash dirty Bitcoin by mixing it with other coins and sending it out in smaller chunks. The fraud boys boast that this system cleans their money and makes it untraceable. What they do not know is that many mixes are already compromised. Some were created and secretly run by law enforcement agencies themselves. Others have been infiltrated or are under heavy surveillance. Even when mixes are legitimate, advanced forensic tools can still identify patterns, cluster transactions, and follow the clean coins back to their origin. Once again, the fraud boy ends up running in circles, thinking he has beaten the system while the FBI patiently waits for him to make one mistake. In Ghana, many of the fraud arrests we have seen in recent years were linked to Bitcoin trails. Fraud boys moved too carelessly, flaunted their wealth on social media, and forgot that the blockchain never lies. EOCO has been working hand in hand with the FBI, sharing intelligence and wallet addresses. Once an address is flagged in Washington, the information is passed on to Accra, and local authorities are alerted. Fraud boys who believe they are safe because they have not cashed out in Ghana quickly realize that they are on an international watch list. It is not only about what happens in Ghana. Once the FBI puts your wallet on their system, 
it follows you anywhere in the world. The FBI has successfully arrested fraudsters across multiple countries using nothing more than blockchain analysis. In Nigeria, Roman scammers have been paraded after being caught converting stolen Bitcoin into luxury cars. In the UK, gangs who laundered millions through Bitcoin were brought down when the Crown Prosecution Service worked with the FBI to follow the blockchain. In Ghana, whispers in the fraud community suggest that several big names have gone quiet, not because they retired, but because they were quietly extradited after Bitcoin trails exposed them. One of the reasons why the FBI is so effective is because of the combination of technology and global cooperation. The blockchain is public, yes, but connecting a wallet to a real human being requires cooperation with exchanges, banks, and governments. The FBI has those relationships. A fraud boy in Accra may believe that using a VPN hides him, but when he eventually tries to buy land, a car, or move the money into a bank account, those purchases create data points. When matched with blockchain footprints, the puzzle completes itself. Fraud boys cannot escape because money always has to land somewhere tangible. Some may argue that fraud boys can keep their Bitcoin forever without cashing out. But the reality is, what use is money if you cannot spend it? They will always attempt to use it in one way or another, and that is when law enforcement closes in. Even dark web markets, which once promised anonymity, have been infiltrated and shut down. The FBI has arrested administrators, seized servers, and collected user data. Fraud boys who use those platforms are now sitting in jail cells, shocked that the system they thought was secure was actually a trap. Bitcoin was not created for fraud. It was built on transparency and decentralization. Fraud boys misused it, and that is why they keep falling into the FBI's net. Every scam, every stolen coin, every laundered transaction leaves a scar on the blockchain that cannot be healed. The FBI has invested millions in forensic tools to exploit that scar. Fraud boys can brag in their circles, but history shows that almost all who play this game end up caught. The blockchain records their rise, and the FBI records their fall. So when fraud boys in Ghana say they are safe because they use Bitcoin, the reality is they are living in a fantasy. The FBI can trace Bitcoin because every move is public, every coin is accounted for, and every attempt to cash out leaves a real-world fingerprint. That is why extraditions will continue. That is why fraud boys will keep going silent. That is why no amount of VPNs, mixes, or bravado can save them when the knock comes at their door. Fam, the truth is simple. Bitcoin does not make fraud boys invisible. It only makes their footprints permanent. Every city, every dollar, every pound you steal and push into crypto leaves a record that can never be erased. The FBI is not sleeping, EOCO is not sleeping, and global partners are watching every wallet. The same blockchain you worship as your hiding place is the same blockchain that will walk you into prison. So the next time a fraud boy tells you Bitcoin is safe, remember, it is safe for the law, not for the scammer. The game is over before it even begins. Wicked Blogger Ghana will keep exposing these lies, keep warning you, and keep breaking down the traps. Protect yourself, protect your money, and do not fall for the hype. Subscribe to Wicked Blogger Ghana, follow us on Instagram, and stay tuned because the streets never sleep and neither do we.